We've been invited to test out the LED wall at Night Sky Studios. And I'm bringing with me the most important thing, which is an Unreal Engine scene I've been spending the last week putting together. We're getting a bit of a frame rate drop. It's not gonna work. It's so amazing, the size of these screens. I'm a little nervous because I'm about to give them over my USB stick with the scene on it. Hopefully we'll actually get to the point where we can shoot something. So stick around to the end of the video to see what we actually managed to put together. So this is their largest screen that we're going to be using. Now, what's most interesting in some cases, LED walls will also have an LED ceiling so that you can have accurate reflections coming overhead. That's obviously really important when you do things like driving shots so that the car has all of the reflections. So for this one, they've got this large softbox with also Ari sky panels. Now I do have some overcast lighting in my scene, but also it means you can bring in some really strong Unreal Engine dynamic lighting from the sky panels, something linked to the engine, bringing in virtual lighting to knit the elements together. I'm really excited to try that out. We're gonna be shooting on the FX9, which is amazing. And that's being put together by Ben around the back of the screen right now. Camera wise, you've got the FX9 here. So what are you currently then doing to, to this camera? The general thing that is happening is the tracker for the VP. That is him. So it's basically an infrared camera, which on the roof, there's a map of retroreflective markers that we essentially build and then that's what's tracking it. What system is that? Is that MOSIS? And the only other addition are these encoders. The encoders are essentially telling MOSIS what is the focus and what the zoom is happening. In terms of what the actual camera is to the tracking, there's nothing really out there bar this big old box and this little, little camera which goes on top. So this place is amazing. There are about three different size screens here currently in place. A driving simulator, one over there, and of course a little window scene as well, which has a, another bunch of LED panels behind it as well. We of course gave them our USB stick with our scene on it. They're gonna make sure that the tracking works and they're gonna make sure that the camera frustrum is all set with this large curved screen. As someone who comes from an indie background, and has to usually do all of these things myself. Well, it's refreshing and very nice to have people doing it for you, but they're a studio and that's what they do. For us, the problem is going to be more of a creative one of making sure that our foreground matches our background and that we can start to knit the elements together. But I had some questions about pixel pitch, which is the distance in millimeters between each pixel on the screen, and it could impact our image. The pixel pitch is 2.3. With that pixel pitch, what does that mean for the distance we can be from the screen itself? At least 2.3 meters away from the screen. But moire is a thing and appears at various focal lengths, angles. You can see it immediately um, on the monitors, which is nice. You can see it before you take the shot. So I guess we're going to be looking at trying to keep the screen a bit soft. A little yeah, bit, but not as soft as you would to... think. This is a genuinely very pretty environment and it would be nice to see it in its glory rather than a <laughs> soft fuzz behind you. This is my friend Andy. He's a DOP and a damn good one at that. This man- it's Very kind. <laughs> this man is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to lighting and cinematography. How much experience with virtual production do you have? Not much, but enough to have said we have done some of it. So uh, we did a stitch in time, which was rear projection. In a living uh, room with a white sheet. Yeah, I mean, that was all part of the aesthetic. What things do you think you're going to learn here today that you have not experienced before? running a big project like this you want to think about your crew times your hire times all that kind of thing from my understanding of how the technology works you you switch the focal depth on the background wall as well to compensate because it needs to know you've switched to a 50 you need to switch to a 50 you can't do you know so, so it's understanding the world around and that affects you know, things like scheduling and things yeah, like absolutely that. absolutely because you need to know is this going to take five minutes ten minutes these are all things you have to do in the engine in your lighting plans and i know in this instance you weren't involved in the building of the scene as much no. basically i had one request and that was depth i was like i really want to make sure that we we had an environment that wasn't just, you know, there's a hill in the background and fields. We wanted yeah. like a textured layered environment. It's going to be fascinating. It's going to be fascinating. Treating this as a, a, an actual production, we would know what the kit is beforehand and we would get the lenses mapped from Moses. What 
they give us this essentially a lens file per lens. And when a lens is swung out or, or swapped, um, we essentially reload that file into Mosis, which tells Unreal what it's trying to, to render. The two encoders essentially need to be reset back to zero points. On the back of it, there is a lens zeroing point. You press and hold lens zero. The frustrum on the screen goes a little weird. You take it all the way in one direction, you take it all the way in the other direction, and all the way back for the focus ring, and then the same with zoom. And that is it now corresponding to the correct um, focus and zoom as what the lens is doing. So the scene is actually now currently running via end display onto this massive LED wall, which is hugely satisfying by the way but there are some issues. I may need to go into the project and start removing items just to try and bring the performance back up. Because if we can't get the performance back up over 25 frames per second solid, it's not gonna work. We've got seven frames per second at the moment. We've got stat FPS and stat GPU running. We can see that something is taking up a lot of draw time. So lumens having an effect. We'll just turn a few things off and see what happens, I guess. And turn them back on and, and see where it off breaks. And on again, yeah. Yeah. We're assuming maybe that part of the problem here is to do with the lights that are in the scene because they are quite hefty. There's a lot of lights and there's a lot of detail that the lights are passing through. Maybe? Maybe. I don't know if that's made much of a difference to your frame rate though. I really thought we'd have a bigger increase. So we're just looking over the scene right now, just trying to find ways to boost the frames per second. It's a solid 30 in the editor. I didn't expect there would be uh, an issue, but it, we're not getting very high frames per second when it goes out to the screen. So I need to find something in here. It's the complexity really of it, isn't it? It's, it's the, if you want to push a lot of content onto the back screen, is it worth doing something that would be equivalent to a pre-light? Would you hire it a day ahead, uh, go in, load it, do your lighting setups to check your lighting plans ahead of time and, and just make sure it all runs smoothly. Ooh, very nice. So because we're having some frame rate issues, we're not going to do any live tracking for our demo, but we are going to do a static shot. So the camera's currently set up for that static shot. You can see here on the screen, we've got our thruster in shot. We've got our crashed ship and a bit of the tree line. So I'm plenty happy with that as a test. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand me in and we're going to mess with the lights and we're going to try and get a nice blend and get the exposure balance right and just end with something that we can take home. What is your focal length on there? Uh, it is a 40, I think. Okay. I think it's currently set at, yeah, 40. Try 35. 35. Yeah, I suppose we can tilt up a little bit. We don't need too much of the uh, thruster, at least because then we can see where the key light's coming from. We've got one light down here that's being our thruster light. Yep. How is that being dialed in? Via DMX. And then you've got these three sky panels doing our same, our diffuse yep. over the top. Yep. And I could just stand in. And it should hopefully it should. start lining up a bit. All right, well, let's have a look. There's obviously a bit of spill on, onto the back. We mm -hmm. thought if we took the truss down, yep. the backlight panels, they could be taken down a bit as well because there's yep. not that much really coming off of that. It's not like strong sunlight. Yep. And you keep that overhead fill. Yep. This is nice. If you take a step forward past the truss, I'll bring it down. How's that looking, do you think, in terms of levels, Andy? Is it too much? It depends on how, like, the distance from it. You could probably because you've got it this down. in frame. It's basically supposed to be that. Yeah, I'd say that's better. Yeah, just so it's catching slightly. Just a bit. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I know we're not getting the crazy frames per second, but is that and that, that will obviously translate to pull focuses and anything like that? Not that much, no. Because I could do a walk in, pull yeah, focus, you... and turn. Put your left hand out for me, just so I can get a focus mark. There is one more thing that we wanted to cover, and that is to do with bokeh. There's something we just discovered, and that's these two bokeh in the back. So this is the two thrusters on the back of the spaceship. 
Now, when you throw them out of focus on the camera, yep. what you would expect is kind of a crisp, hard-edged bokeh, yep. if it were real life. Yes, exactly. So there is a reason that that's not happening at this moment in time. It's because they are an emissive texture rather than a light source. So although it is showing up as, as you'd expect in Unreal as, as emitting light, it's not actually emitting light, if that makes sense. Because we've done some back projection work in the past, and that's a characteristic of back projection. Yep. Soft bokeh that just don't blow out the way normally they do. And the last thing you want to do is end up in a studio like this yep. and find out that these things aren't happening. So that's a really cool thing to know. So this goes back to what we were talking about earlier of where your pre-production is is in such a way that the, the pre-light of this would be that that as a lighting element would be treated as a pre-light section. So you bring this up, go, oh no, we need to change this, change those to be an actual light source, not an emissive, and then come back and play with it. Huge, huge, huge thanks to the people here at Night Sky Studios to actually have us, to host us. And they've just been so, so accommodating and, and amazing. So I'm looking forward to doing more work with these guys to, to build more scenes and try things out. I am certain this is not the last time we are gonna be here. I think this is gonna be the start of something really fun. This was such a big video to put together that tons of stuff ended up on the cutting room floor. So if you want to see more from my visit to Night Sky Studios, there are exclusive clips on my Patreon. And in one particular one, we get an up close and detailed look at an LED panel. I've also been posting extended versions of my YouTube tutorials. Plus there are some VIP perks for my Discord, which you should join anyway, by the way, because it's now filling up with some really cool and knowledgeable people. So if you like the work that I do on this channel, please head over and consider becoming a patron. Links are in the description and I'll see you on the next one.